Welcome to today's training on closure requests. Please note that although this presentation is geared toward closures, it contains many best practices that can be used by committees throughout the full election cycle, including how to address discrepancies for audit deficiency notices. The following presentation was created for campaigns to use as a reference before requesting closure. Please note that the list below does not include all items reviewed by the Audit and Enforcement Unit. Instead, this resource is meant to cover the most common items that prevent timely closure. Furthermore, this resource does not provide legal advice or absolve a committee from complying with state and or local election laws. Please note this video can be watched all the way through or navigate to different topics by clicking on the hyperlinks in the table of contents. Additional resources and contact information is available at the end of the presentation. Please note several slides contain a number in the bottom right-hand corner. This number corresponds to a minute marker in the MD Chris overview video. Candidates are encouraged to review the chapter reference for additional information. The campaign finance report must be marked final in order to close. Otherwise, the committee will remain open and active regardless of its financial activity or cash balance. In MD Chris, select File Closeout Report to indicate the report is the final report. For new report filings, this button can be found under View File Pending Transactions module located on the left side menu. If the committee needs to amend a previously filed report, Select Amend Transactions from the left side menu. Once the closeout report has been filed, it will be reviewed by the Audit and Enforcement Team. It is important to know that the committee is not officially closed until the responsible officers receive confirmation from the State Board. Please allow two to four weeks for the review of the closure request. A political committee may not be closed if according to the State Board records, one or more of the following exist. There's an outstanding campaign finance report due, including amendments that are required, the committee owes late fees or civil penalties, or the reports filed are not in compliance or incomplete. You can review the closeout report chapter of the MD Chris overview video, which begins at minute marker 5542 for more information. Once reviewed by the State Board of Elections, one of the following two letters will be issued. If in compliance, the SBE will issue a closed and compliance letter. Upon receipt, the committee will officially be closed. Election Law Article Section 13.221 requires all treasurers to preserve detailed and accurate records of a campaign finance entity until two years after the entity files their final report and it's been approved by the State Board of Elections. If the committee later decides to conduct future campaign finance activity, they must establish a new political committee with SBE prior to the occurrence of any financial transactions. If not in compliance, the closeout request will not be processed. Instead, the committee will be issued a non-compliance letter listing the details of each deficiency. The committee will have 30 days to resolve the discrepancy. It's important to note that the committee will not be issued a closed letter until all deficiencies are corrected. The committee is responsible for compliance with all laws, regulations, and filing deadlines. If assistance is needed in resolving the discrepancies, the committee is encouraged to reach out to SBE for additional guidance. An active status change is made by the Audit and Enforcement Unit for a period of 30 days only if one of the following reasons is applicable. One, the only non-compliant violation is late fees and or civil penalties. Two, there's an open support ticket with our software vendor to fix an issue. Three, the committee is waiting on an audit or reconciliation from the audit team. Please note, only a member of the audit and enforcement unit can change the committee status. If a committee would like to be reactivated prior to the 30-day window, they would need to contact the audit and enforcement team by sending an email request to audit.sbe at maryland.gov. Important. Being placed on an active status does not 
remove the requirement to file any upcoming campaign finance reports. Failure to file campaign finance reports by the reporting deadline is subject to late fees. When it comes to filing a final report for closeout, there are two options. A campaign finance report or an affidavit of limited contributions and expenditures. It's very important that the committee is aware of the requirements for filing an affidavit. In lieu of filing a detailed campaign finance report, a political committee may file an affidavit of limited contributions and expenditures if the committee did not spend or receive more than $1,000 in the aggregate exclusive of the filing fee within a campaign finance reporting period. Please note the affidavit does not relieve the committee of any future reporting requirements and must be renewed every reporting period. Once the political committee exceeds the $1,000 threshold, a detailed campaign finance report must be filed the subsequent filing period. This report must also include any and all transactions that occurred during the period covered by the affidavit. Campaigns need to pay close attention to their past filing reports to determine the appropriate report to file. A committee can verify the filing types by logging into MDCRIS and selecting View Edit Committee Registration from the left side menu. About halfway down the page, the committee will see filing information. If filing method states Affidavit or ALCE for all filing periods, the final report can be submitted as an affidavit. An example is shown on this slide. You can review the Filing an Affidavit of Limited Contribution and Expenditures chapter of the MDCRIS video, which begins at minute 45. Additionally, this screen contains a link to frequently asked questions regarding affidavits of limited contributions and expenditures. If a committee has spent or received more than $1,000 at any point while the committee was active, a committee is required to file a full campaign finance report as their final report. A committee can verify the filing types, a campaign finance report versus an affidavit by logging into MDCRIS and selecting View Edit Committee Registration from the left side menu. About halfway down the page, the committee will see the filing information section. A campaign finance report will be denoted as campaign statement or amended campaign statement. In the example on this slide, the committee filed a campaign finance report in 2022, followed by subsequent affidavits. If the committee wants to close out, they are required to file their final report as a campaign finance report, even if the committee spent or received less than $1,000 during the final period. SBE will reject an affidavit if marked as final in these circumstances. When a closure request is received by SBE, the auditor will review the most recent campaign finance report or affidavit to determine if the campaign marked the report as final. If the report is not marked as final, the committee will remain open and active regardless of its financial activity or cash balance. A committee can verify their last report was marked as final by logging into MDCRIS and selecting View Edit Committee Registration from the left side menu. About halfway down the page, the committee will see Filing Information section. Click on the hyperlink next to the last report filed. Keep in mind that the most recent report is listed on the top and verify the report indicates final. To submit a new campaign finance report and mark it as final, log into MDCRIS and select View File Pending Transactions, then select File Closeout Report. To submit an amended campaign finance report and mark it as final, log into MDCRIS and select Amend Transactions, then select File Closeout Report. If filing a final affidavit, select File Affidavit ALCE from the left side menu, then check the box for closeout affidavit. 
Another common oversight has to do with campaigns not listing their bank account information in MD Chris. Pursuant to election law section 13220A2, a political committee must establish a checking account exclusively for campaign use. The checking account must be established at a financial institution that is located or operates branches in Maryland. The name of the political committee must be on the account. All income, including loans, must be deposited in the campaign bank account. Personal bank accounts of the responsible officers or the candidate may not be used. Failure to maintain a bank account will result in a civil penalty. A committee can verify their depository information is listed in MD Chris by logging into MD Chris and selecting View Edit Committee Registration from the left side menu. About halfway down the page, the campaign will see Depository Information section. If the Depository Information section does not list the campaign bank account, select Add New Depository Information button. Once the depository information is entered, be sure to select Save, then scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and select Submit. If the committee does not select both Save and Submit, the changes will not be recorded and can result in a civil penalty. You can review the depository chapter of the MD Chris video, which begins at minute 552. Another common oversight is for late fees and or outstanding civil penalties. Late fees are assessed to committees who did not file their campaign finance reports or amended reports for an audit deficiency notice by the filing deadline. Let late fees accrue up to a maximum of $1,000 per report. Civil penalties are assessed as a result of a non-compliance violation resulting from complaints, audits, closure reviews, etc. A committee can verify all outstanding fees and or penalties have been paid by logging into MD Chris and selecting View Edit Committee Registration from the left side menu. About three quarters of the way down the page, the committee will see Citation Violation Information and Violation section. If both of these fields show no results or an outstanding balance of zero dollars, no further action is required. If a campaign has outstanding late fees, they can pay by check payable to the Maryland State Board of Elections and mail to the Maryland State Board of Elections at 151 West Street, Suite 200, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401, or paid by debit or credit card by calling the phone numbers on the screen. Late fees should be paid as soon as possible, however, are due within 30 days of the date of the non-compliance letter. Alternatively, late fee waivers may be submitted by completing a late fee waiver request form. Late fees are heard and decided by the Board of Elections. Civil penalties are disputed differently. Please contact Campaign Finance or Audit Enforcement Unit for more information. When logging into MD Chris, verify that all pending transactions have been filed. About halfway down the reminders page, there is a section called Pending Filing for a Committee. This section will show the number, if any, of unfiled transactions that need to be addressed. Select the hyperlink for the corresponding report to review and submit or delete these pending transactions. To work through the remaining closure items, it's often necessary for the committee to have the most recent campaign finance reports available, either as an electronic PDF or printed. As a best practice, the committee should avoid using an old copy and or a preliminary report since it might not reflect all activity if there were subsequent changes or amendments. To pull the most recent reports, navigate to the committee's registration page by selecting View Edit Registration from the left side menu. Scroll about halfway down the page to Filing Information. Filing Information comes just after the Documents and Correspondence section. Once the Filing Information section has been located, select the blue hyperlink for each report to download and print or to view. Total outstanding loans and obligations must be paid or forgiven. If the loan or bill has been forgiven or it's been paid, the responsible officer must log into MD Chris to record the entry. 
A committee can determine if all of its loans and obligations have been addressed by reviewing page 2, section 6 of their most recent campaign finance report. This section will show the remaining outstanding loan balances. If the section shows zero, no further action is required, assuming that all previous transactions related to loans or bills have been recorded accurately. For committees who file affidavits or ALCEs, this section of the presentation is not applicable. For a more detailed breakdown of the outstanding loans and bills, the committee can find this information on the last page of the most recent campaign finance report under Schedule 3, Outstanding Obligations, Loans, and Unpaid Bills. A political committee must make every effort to repay the debt, However, if the political committee, due to extenuating circumstances, is unable to pay the debt, the political committee may close only after producing documentation satisfactory to the state board of the political committee's inability to pay. The state board's action to close the political committee does not limit the right of the creditor to bring action against the responsible officers, candidate of the political committee. Additionally, failure to pay may be considered an in-kind contribution subject to the limits. This failure to pay a bill may result in an over-contribution and possible enforcement actions. To record a payment or forgiveness in the current reporting period, the committee will expand the left side menu and select Enter Loan Payments or Enter Outstanding Obligations Paid module. To record a payment or forgiveness in a prior reporting period, the committee will expand the left side menu and select amend transactions. On the next screen, select new outstanding obligation paid or new loan payment buttons. You can review the entering loan payments chapter of the MD Chris video, which begins at minute marker 4134. If the candidate or other party made a loan and it's been repaid, the loan will be converted to an expenditure. Please note that committees can do partial repayments and partial forgiveness. In these situations, the committee should enter all repayments first and complete the steps to forgive any remaining balance once the appropriate letters have been secured and provided to the State Board of Elections. You can review Entering Loan Payments and Repaying Candidate Loans chapter of the Marilyn Chris video, which begins at 42.38 minute marker. In the case of an outstanding loan to the campaign, the lender has the option of forgiving the loan. Forgiven loans must reflect the conversion to an in-kind contribution. Loans made by the candidate or other party to the committee require a loan forgiveness letter to be provided to the State Board of Elections, indicating the exact dollar amount of the loan that's been forgiven. Please note, outstanding loans from persons other than the candidate may be forgiven only up to the contribution limit. If the converted loan plus other contributions from the same individual or entity exceed $6,000 during the election cycle, a violation may have occurred. The committee can send a copy of the loan forgiveness letter by email to audit.sbe at maryland.gov or mail to the Maryland State Board of Elections, 151 West Street, Suite 200, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Review the Forgiving a Candidate Loan chapter of the MD Chris Overview video, which begins at minute marker 4334. Pursuant to Section 13311 of the Election Law Article, a political committee must have disposed of all property or assets of the committee. When a political committee closes, items purchased by the committee, such as equipment, furniture, must be sold, and the money from the sale must be disposed of in the same manner as other surplus funds. These items cannot be retained by the candidate or the committee. The best way for the campaign to verify all equipment or furniture has been disposed of is to review the campaign finance reports to ensure all items recorded in Schedule 2, Purchase of Equipment, has been properly disposed of. 
Alternatively, the committee can pull an Excel version of all campaign expenditures and place a filter on the expense purpose column to identify transactions in which the equipment was purchased. Pulling an Excel version of the expenditure report is very similar to pulling contributions. Start by selecting disclosures, then select view expenditures slash outstanding obligations. Next, enter the committee name in the orange box using the same naming convention referenced in the previous slide, then select search. When the data populates, select the Excel icon to download. A non-compliance violation will show up in MDCRIS as a red compliance flag. There are many reasons a non-compliance flag can be triggered, including missing employer name, incomplete contributor name, or incomplete address, for a few examples. To identify potential non-compliance issues, select Amend Transactions from the left side menu, then select the report name and select the box Non-Compliant Transactions. Once search has been executed, a list of any non-compliance flags will appear. The committee can click on the edit icon to see more information as to what is missing to bring that record into compliance. Once the edit has been made, save the record and proceed to the next non-compliance flag. Repeat these steps until all reports are reviewed and corrected. Many times these errors will not affect the cash balance. However, the committee should check before submitting the amendment that they're still in balance. If no results are found, proceed to the next report. In order to close the committee, the bank and cash balance must both be zero. The bank balance is on page one, part two, and needs to be compared to the cash balance on page two, part four of the most recent campaign finance report. If both figures are zero, no further action is required by the committee for this step of the closure process. If these two figures are not zero, there are one of three scenarios committee should be aware of when reviewing bank and cash balances. One is if both bank and cash balances match and they're a positive number greater than zero, this is known as surplus funds. Both the bank and cash balances match and are negative number, less than zero, this is known as a negative cash balance. And the third is if the bank and cash balances do not match. This is known as a bank versus cash balance discrepancy. If the bank and cash balances match and are a positive figure, this means that the campaign has surplus funds. Surplus funds cannot be paid to the candidate or the committee. Instead, they need to be disposed of in one of the following ways. One, return pro rata to the contributors. Two, pay to the state central committee of the political party of which the candidate is a member. Three, pay to the local central committee of the political party of which the candidate is a member in the county in which the candidate resides or the candidate seeks to represent. Four, pay to the Board of Education of a county in which the candidate resides or which the candidate seeks to represent. Five, pay to a nonprofit organization that provides services or funds for the benefits of pupils or teachers. Six, pay to a charitable organization registered or exempt from registration under the Maryland Charitable Solicitations Act or paid to a public or private institution of higher education in the state if that institution possesses a certificate of approval from the Maryland Higher Education Commission and the payment is designated for use by the institution solely to award scholarships, grants, or loans to students attending the institution. Once the committee decides how they want to dispose of the surplus funds, they need to record the transaction in MD Chris. If the transaction took place in the current reporting period, the committee will select Enter New Expenditure from the left side menu. If the transaction took place in a previous reporting period, the committee will select Amend Transactions from the left side menu, then select Enter New Expenditures button. 
A negative cash balance usually results from a failure to report all income, contribution, or loans. Alternatively, the error could result from expenditures being overstated, duplicated, or the committee overdrafting their campaign finance bank account. Another common error is that committees often record in-kind contributions as expenditures. For example, if a candidate purchases $20 of pizza as a thank you to the campaign workers and pays for the pizza out of his or her own pocket without asking the campaign to reimburse him or her, this would be recorded as an in-kind contribution. Conversely, if a candidate paid for pizza out of his or her own pocket and was subsequently reimbursed, this transaction would be recorded as an expenditure. If a transaction should have been recorded as an in-kind contribution, but was recorded as an expenditure in error, the committee needs to amend the campaign finance reports to delete those expenditures and enter the transactions as in-kind contributions. A careful review of your contributions and expenditures compared to the receipts and disbursements on your reports should assist in finding the error. If your report reflected a negative balance, please file an amendment resolving the negative balance. If the bank balance and cash balance do not match, this is known as a bank versus cash balance discrepancy. If the committee recorded all transactions accurately, the cash balance and bank balance should match exactly. If they do not, the committee will have to to carefully review all transactions to ensure all activity has been recorded. As a best practice, the committee should review the ending cash balance from previously filed reports in order to ensure it copied over to the prior balance field correctly. If a campaign notices a discrepancy with a prior balance section of their report, please contact the State Board of Elections for assistance. Please watch the audit deficiency video for more details, including best practices on how to locate and correct cash versus bank balance discrepancies. During your review, if you notice a transaction is missing, you can add it by selecting amend transactions from the left side menu. Select the filing period and search to launch additional buttons. Select the appropriate button to add the missing transaction. If you have multiple transactions that are missing, repeat these steps until all missing transactions are accounted for. Use the Preview Campaign Statement button to check your work. During your review, if you notice a transaction was recorded in error, you can delete it by selecting Amend Transactions from the left side menu. Search for the transaction by selecting the filing period. You can use the other fields shown on the screen to narrow your search, including transaction type, transaction category, amount range, etc. Once the transaction is located, select the checkbox to the far right of the screen for each transaction that you need to delete. Once the transaction is selected, click the Delete Selected Records button at the bottom of the screen. Use Preview Campaign Statement button to check your work. As a best practice, committees are encouraged to preview their campaign finance reports prior to filing their final closure request by selecting File Preview. To access File Preview, expand the left side menu and select either View Edit Pending Transactions module for new reports or select Amend Transactions for previously filed reports. This will allow the committee to check their work before filing to catch any remaining errors. Please note that preview campaign statement is optional. If everything is in balance and accurate, the committee will still need to select file amendment to state button for the changes to go through. For questions or additional information, please contact the Audit and Enforcement Unit or Division of Candidacy and Campaign Finance. Once all transactions are recorded or deleted, you will file the amendment by selecting Amend Transactions from the left side menu. Then select the filing period and select Search to launch additional buttons. If the committee is ready to close, select File Closeout Report button. Otherwise, select File Amendment to State. 
After selecting file amendment to state, the following screen will appear. The committee needs to record the bank ending balance for each report. In the screenshot shown here, see fields highlighted in yellow. This needs to be done for all amendments, even if there wasn't a financial change, such as a missing employer. As a reminder, the goal is for the committee to capture all transactions so that the bank ending balance and cash balance match. If you get to this screen and you notice your cash balance, shown in pink, is different from what you entered for your bank ending balance, shown in the black font, the committee still has a remaining discrepancy to locate. For questions or additional information, please contact the Audit Enforcement Unit or Division of Candidacy and Campaign Finance.